be fine on YouTube. Uh, actually, like the more edgy it was, the better. Fast forward a year and a half, maybe, and you know, I'm like super miserable. Uh, going to a therapist because uh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know how many YouTubers are depressed because of YouTube. He get tens of millions of hits on his most popular videos. But a couple years ago, YouTube started dropping channels that weren't family friendly from their preferred program in order to attract advertisers. So anyway, all this shit was going on and I was super unhappy and I get an email and it's like, Hi, we're a company from China. We think you could be very big in China. YouTubers subject themselves to the cruel eye of public scrutiny with every video they publish, not only by the cold, unforgiving judgment of the viewer, but the curators of the very platform itself. It's pretty widely accepted that over the past several years, YouTube has significantly cracked down on the various conditions and rules one must follow in order to maintain a steady income and healthy viewership. Like anything, the website is constantly changing, and as the site continues to grow over time, it's only natural for the market to become more and more generalized, which means YouTube must cater to the mainstream if they wish to extend their brand, leaving many of their creators at a crossroads. Either find a way to adapt to the new system System or run the risk of fading into the darkest shadows of obscurity, with one of the more glaring examples of the latter being a peculiar man by the name of Bart Baker. Yo guys, yo guys, yo guys! Bart Baker was considered among the most talented and successful parody artists from around 2011 to early 2017, raking in a little over 10 million subscribers and a stunning total of 3.1 billion views worldwide. As pop stars like Taylor Swift and Katy Perry were hitting their strides, YouTube saw a high demand for music parodies, opening the door for channels like The Key of Awesome and Wasabi Productions to rack up tens of millions of views on the regular. Though nobody was more famous for their musical satire than the baked man himself. Uh, yo, what's up? More on the shoot. Cut. <laughs> Consisting of high budgets and elaborate sets that perfectly matched the scenes he was mocking, Bart would generate a hefty income by reimagining the most popular music videos of the day. Using the success of A-list celebrities to his advantage, he was able to captivate millions of viewers per upload. Which is just astonishing, man. And then I did a parody in 2010. Boom boom pow, good god. Wow. <laughs> that what? song. It had SEO and it had comedy and it had music. But when you create these parodies, I mean you could literally throw sure. the artist name, the title name. Well, yeah, you have to. It's exact it's just, everybody's it's, featured. Right. So it's usually the third, second or third result under the original, like after a couple days. Sometimes awesome. after like the next day. There was a market there, and Bart knew exactly how to tap into it. There's always a strategy of some kind that goes into cultivating a following, whether that's developing a clear impression personal connection with the viewer, or simply writing off the publicity of your own morally skewed antics, there's a lot of scheming that goes into building a sturdy and consistent viewer base. For Bart, the formula was actually pretty simple when you boil it down. Anytime Taylor Swift, for example, dropped a new video, he would get straight to work, rewriting lyrics, casting characters, recreating different sets, etc. The process itself wasn't always super complicated, it just needed to be done in a timely manner before the original video lost its relevance. He wasn't exploiting the fame of these artists, but rather cleverly taking advantage of all the hype circulating around them. He was confident that if he could just somehow direct attention onto his own content, it was smooth sailing from there, which granted him a pretty reliable stream of income. Because it's not like singers are just gonna stop releasing music videos. As long as celebrities were churning out hits, Bart would continue to make a living. A brilliant strategy that seemed to contain no end in sight. Or at least... It appeared that way. Ever wonder what he's up to now? Ni hao. Wo shi baga. Okay, so ba, to pyo ge wo. I see you tomorrow, or maybe I'll see you tonight. I don't know, I'll see you in the morning, bye. Jesus. Yeah, the worst episode of Black Mirror ever. We'll get into that in a second though. First, it's time to take a little trip down. 
At the height of the adpocalypse, Bart made a pretty huge announcement on his main channel with a video titled, No More Parodies, Please Watch, This Is Not A Joke, stating that he had been seriously affected by the wave of demonetizations that famously rocked YouTube in 2017. Now, the purpose of this video was not what the title may have implied. He was still gonna make parodies. This was more of a call to action than anything. The fewer ads meant he wasn't making as much money off his parodies. And when you've got an entire production crew on the payroll, that's a big deal. The ads are not playing on a lot of people's videos uh, right now, um, and we don't know how long it's going to last. Certain channels are being affected more than others. My channel is getting absolutely crushed. So he knew he had to act, and to Bart, the most reasonable solution was to start really going hard on his second channel where there were more ads. All I am going to ask for you guys to help support uh, and keep this channel going and the parodies going is for you guys to subscribe to my second channel, which I am relaunching, and I'm going to keep it PG, so I can get the ads served on the videos. The mindset was that if he could start getting paid more on his vlog channel, he could continue to have a budget for the parodies that were predicted to make less money given the changing atmosphere at YouTube. A plan that probably would have worked out better if his vlogs were as easily marketable as his parodies. Uh, they weren't, unfortunately. I really do feel like if I relaunch my vlog channel and all you guys subscribe and support and watch, it's gonna help tremendously to pay for my production costs. Please go subscribe. I actually have a brand new vlog up today. The first one, the relaunch of the channel. It's a behind the scenes of my humble parody. It was during this time that he got back to business as usual, making parodies of Kendrick Lamar, Taylor Swift, Cardi B, whatever. This is <laughs> Although the production remained consistent in quality, the views were steadily decreasing. For a normal YouTuber, a 7 million view video would be astonishingly impressive. But for what Bart was used to, that was on the much, much, much lower end. Things were not looking good for our friend. So by February of 2018, he made a video called My Channel is Being Shut Down. Essentially a plea to his audience to download a web browser called Brave that would help fund future parodies. This came as a result of his channel being hidden from YouTube's preferred program, as he put it. His videos were no longer showing up in People's Recommended, which in my opinion probably lent itself to a few factors. Let me put it this way. After getting removed from Preferred, for me to even break even on the cost of a parody, I would have to be getting 40 million views a video. Obviously, this is not sustainable. Like a ton of other channels, I, I've continued to experience plummeting AdSense, and most recently, a huge, huge dip in exposure. My subscribers are not seeing my uploads. I'm getting tweets from people asking where I've been, why I've stopped uploading. I haven't. I have not stopped uploading. You're just for some reason not seeing them. For starters, YouTube's landscape had changed significantly since Bart first burst onto the scene. In 2012, it was way more common to see shorter, easily digestible videos hit recommended than it is today. Combine that with the massive success of the videos he was making fun of, and you have the recipe for an insane viral video. Well, as the years go on, viewers come and go, and so do the site's own creators. By 2016, we saw the rise of commentators, with illustrious channels like Leafy Is Here paving the way for an entirely new format. Niche 10-minute commentary videos that were easy to mass produce. And they got insane views. By combining a lengthy watch time with clever clickbait, these channels began to override the slowly fading stars of yesterday. As the algorithm began to naturally shift, Anyone who failed to catch up was simply doomed to burn out. Throughout this time, Bart's content never changed, which would prove itself to be detrimental in the long run. Actually, a lot of people have been missing the parody uploads because there's so many uploads on YouTube now. So please tap that bell. So much goes into making these videos. It's not just sitting in front of a camera and talking. It is weeks of preparation. And I think most of you guys know that. You see that from behind the scenes. As Bart was reluctant to realize, the golden age of his channel had unfortunately passed, with one final parody being uploaded in August of 2018. Meanwhile, he began seeking out alternative ventures to his parody channel, quietly adopting the title of Lil Clorox, th this weird persona that was meant to mock SoundCloud mumble rappers? 
I guess? I don't even really know. All I know is he's pretty serious about it. My dream, she my dream. Thank the Lord that she 18. She my dream, she my dream. Thank the Lord that she 18. She my dream, she my dream. Thank the Lord that she 18. I'm in love, I'm in love with the prom queen. Is that Amanda Cerny? Yeah, yeah. I know you wanna put this like a razor. Your boyfriend is a lame, let me your bridge. I'll bless you with my fame and all my people. Yeah, I'll give you that god dick and I'm a savior. It's not even a bad idea, really. I mean, he's literally created a character to ridicule the types of artists he's always sought to deride. It probably would have worked out if he had fully embraced the role. But instead, Lil Clorox fell off after about two months. So there goes that chapter, I guess. Dude, I don't even know what to call you now. Is it Bart? Is it Clorox? Is it Lil? I mean, you know, you can call me whatever, man. You can call me Bart. Call me Clorox, you can call me Lil Clorox, you can call me Fuckboy Clorox, you can call me Fuckboy straight up. Honestly, I actually did a vote on my channel and people voted. People wanted me to just be straight up Fuckboy. <laughs> At this point in his career, Bart had entirely abandoned three separate YouTube channels, including the one that brought hundreds of thousands, if not millions, into his own bank account. You wouldn't expect a creator to just neglect a channel of over 10 million fans, would you? I mean, if you're leaving that behind, surely you found something way more prosperous and enjoyable to focus on, right? Well, <laughs> funny story about that. That song is epic, but check out Bobby the Phone Good. How many things in this world sadly have become lonely? I am the Lord, so I'm me happy. Every day others ways me but real quick, uh, we actually have a sponsor. If you've ever used public Wi-Fi, you've probably linked to an unencrypted connection at some point or another. When you send data, you're sending out countless pieces of information so vulnerable, it can be intercepted by a collection of questionable parties before it reaches its final destination. That's a big problem, which is why ExpressVPN is here to help. ExpressVPN secures your internet connection by using the highest standards of encryption available. Unlike some services, <coughs> <coughs> they invest in premium servers, making ExpressVPN the fastest and highest rated VPN provider by TechRadar, CNET, and more. Plus, ExpressVPN allows you to reroute your connection to a server in a country of your choice, making geo restrictions a thing of the past. I've actually used ExpressVPN at my school's library because I don't trust a single f in Seoul on my campus, and neither should you. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box below. That's expressvpn.com slash Aubrey. Huge thanks again to ExpressVPN for not only keeping my information secure, but also paying towards my tuition. Because we all know how lovely Susan feels about paying her creators. Bart is a pretty good example of that. Only you may be asking yourself, where did he go next? In mid-2019, Bart made a resurgence. Only it wasn't what you may expect. Hey, yo, guy, you want a battle? Then let's do it. Just can cut the dust the Bart has been able to gain a new audience of 10 million Chinese followers by translating Chinese songs into English on a Chinese version of TikTok. I, I don't know either, man. <laughs> Life is like a thousand souls drifting away out of sight. Life is like a thousand stars light up the moon tonight. Apparently, okay, alright, so this manager from China saw the incredible success of his parody channel and ruled that Bart would make an excellent entertainer on an app called... Oh, f***. Uh, do... Oh, do... Doyen? Doyen? Doyen. Doyen. Please don't kill me, China. Which is essentially just foreign TikTok. Because Bart saw his channel as a lost cause, he pounced on the opportunity to become a star in China. And I'll be damned if it didn't work like a charm. It's only taken this guy a few months to regain the momentum it originally took him years to obtain on his YouTube channel. I don't know how someone can look simultaneously 40 and 18 at the same time, but I'd call that impressive. I'm afraid that I will fall someday. Oh no. Anybody can betray this way 
Even if you only see me one day Leave a comment what song I should do next, hit that follow button and please like and share this if you want more. Peace out, or oh, I need to war. God man, it's like a Simpsons episode, what the f happened well according to bart long story short i basically stopped uploading i used to upload two parodies a month but then youtube went to shit and all the money got pulled out from the platform so i couldn't afford to make parodies anymore at that rate i also started to hate making them and it became a chore i don't make content for the us anymore i launched in china two months ago and have grown to 10 million followers in that short time so now that's my main focus once in a while i might upload a parody like two times a year maybe but if you want to see my new content switch your app store to china and download Douyin. it's singing not not comedy. Sometimes you gotta change shit up or you go insane. Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Okay, that's enough. Let's calm down there. I gotta listen to the song they sent me and then I have to translate it and then I have to record it. Then I have to shoot the video. Then I have to edit it. So this is the... This is rough translation. Usually it just doesn't make any sense. So I have to totally change it all. Um, How do you change it? I put the Chinese into Google Translate and then I have to make all the words rhyme. So that's what the fans are into. That's what got the uh, accounts really popular. So basically, after receiving a mysterious email from a Chinese platform, Bart was promised stardom in exchange for his dignity. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It kinda. It just doesn't seem like this is something he enjoys. I mean, from the outside looking in, it's almost like this Chinese corporation set their sights on Bart purely to gain more sponsorships. Bart is a talented guy, but aside from his popularity, I, I just don't see why else they'd seek him out. Does that mean, I don't know, it just seems like they want him for his numbers is all. And if that's the case, then it's fucked. What makes you decide this guy, I can make him a hit here? 嗯,这个其实很难说了 This is a tactic many managers use as a way to undersell their clients' talent so that they don't seek work elsewhere. It's a classic poker strategy where discouraging remarks are used as a way to kill Bart's ego so he doesn't build up the confidence to realize his own creative potential. Really scummy behavior if you ask me, but hey, <laughs> that's your business, eh? I feel like I need to reiterate the fact that it's only taken a handful of videos to achieve the same success he's amounted on his parody channel. I don't know how, how you do that. But he did it. He also live streams and hosts music sessions online with his fans, as well as appearing at live performances. People think this is a joke, but you can't make this up. His commitment is unlike anything I've ever seen, and there's probably good reason behind it. As mentioned earlier, Bart got to a point where he saw his own standing on YouTube as a wasted effort due to the newly diversified landscape and YouTube's recent shift to family-friendly content. This can take a massive, massive toll on someone mentally. I cannot even begin to tell you how many YouTubers I know who have been directly affected by the harrowing conditions of internet fame. It may seem like the perfect lifestyle on the outside, but make no mistake, such an arbitrary and otherwise callous way of living can leave lasting scars on the inside if you aren't careful. When you develop a large, dedicated audience for yourself, an illusion of legitimacy is assumed by not only your viewers, but you, which can make you feel incompetent when faced with any type of hardship. This is more commonly known as imposter syndrome, which can leave you feeling inadequate and even undeserving despite your success, which then can even cause you to overwork yourself to compensate for that feeling of insufficiency. Fame is a drug, and if you don't get your fix of it, you can go into withdrawal. Too many YouTubers intertwine their self-worth with numbers, making it a dangerous phenomenon to grapple with. Because of his declining channels, I don't think Bart recognized his own potential on the platform and thus opted to leave it for a shinier, more promising career to be had over in China. Whether you agree with his decision or not, this shift was definitely justified given his circumstances. As a YouTuber, you're forced to work with the cards you've been dealt, and YouTube had clearly dealt Bart a 2 and a 7. He needed to do something. And instead of bowing down to the new terms and conditions, he said f*** it and moved on. Which I would normally commend him for if I didn't think he was so f***ing unhappy. Everyone in China is so nice. Everyone I meet. Bart's YouTube videos used to involve huge crews with expensive cameras and massive budgets. But now that he switched to China, it's just Bart and an iPhone. Uh, how I say that? Whoa. 
Personally speaking, it genuinely saddens me to see such a bright and talented YouTuber forced into submission by a powerful and possibly tyrannical foreign corporation that basically owns the rights to him now. Maybe he enjoys it, maybe he doesn't. I have no way of knowing. But behind those hollow, soulless eyes lives a man who became the very caricature he once sought to destroy. Nothing more than a shell of what he once was, desperate to make a living during one of the most trying times on YouTube. Callous shoved out of the limelight by the very hand that fed him for the better half of a decade. My hope is that Bart is at least able to find true satisfaction with whatever content he chooses to make. Because if it's one thing he deserves, it's to find the same happiness he once provided for all of us.